Next one there, the Aorus Gen 4 NVMe PCIe Expansion Card. Good to see you guys are there. Now, you may notice this is already installed. Yes, that's correct. I already have this installed. We're going to try and remove it. I'm going to take you for a quick demo through this card. I think it's an incredible upgrade. Sorry, we're experiencing technical difficulties. This is a tough card to remove. However, we got it. Now, forgive me, you'll notice there's a bit of damage there. I did pick this up secondhand. I promise that wasn't me. I'm very careful with my componentry. Now, absolutely beautiful card. Yes, there's a bit of dust, but honestly, this has only been in there for maybe a few months. Very well designed. We've got the rear fan outlet. There are a few LEDs. We'll focus a little bit better to see those. So you do have your indicators there for drive functionality. That does mean it can fit four NVMe drives, but more on that very shortly. Nice little cutscene. Here we go. So you'll see those SUS connectors down the bottom. We've got the rather suboptimally placed uh, SATA connections there as well. They do run into problems with GPU clearance. Okay, cover on for safety. Let's launch right into this. Very easy to fit, but you will have to make sure you pick up some nice NVMe drives for this one as well. They do require the M key as well, but more on that later. Now I'm going to take you through the full process here. Screw removal, very important on these. They are very fine um, headed Phillips screws, so you want to be careful. They are quite easy to strip. You'll notice I'm using a hand tool. Definitely wouldn't go near these with the power tool. Way too risky. You could either destroy the screw head or you could destroy uh, the nut mounted within the uh, fan shroud there. So you want to take your time, be patient with these. You'll notice there every once in a while it sort of slips. So you want to make sure that the Phillips head bit that you've got is a perfect match. Mine is decent, but even then these are very delicate screws, not easy to get them out. Okay, as we work our way through, one to go. You'll notice there are six on the rear panel. Those, as far as I know, only function to hold uh, actually the rear uh, shield there, but they do go into, given their length, the uh, sort of front shroud as well, so you absolutely want to get these off. They do expose the PCB, so the control board there, as well as the next lot of screws that we have to remove. So again, very well designed, nice for uh, probably mainly for strengthening the card. But it's quite a long card. So the next one's there, four screws on the back. Those have to come out to be able to pry apart the fan shroud there from the rest of the motherboard there. Call it a motherboard or a PCB. So these screws, super short. You want to again be very careful. Now I always go in a crisscross pattern just because that does provide you some uh, protection, mainly uh, sort of a habit you pick up from working on car engines. Uh, I assume the computer engineers apply the same rules as what we have in the car world. So four screws, very easy. Then it should just pop open. Now if yours is brand new, this will be a breeze. Mine's been in the computer and I'm going to have some trouble getting this off. Now lots of tactics for this. You want to check to make sure you haven't missed any screws. Now, I'm thoroughly checking this, making sure that I haven't missed one, because if you have, you can cause damage. Uh, sorry, suboptimal camera angle. Maybe we'll transition to the other one. Uh, beautiful card. Very, very well designed. And you'll notice here, just trying to pry a little bit. It appears to be loose, but you really begin to second guess your process when it doesn't want to budge. It's quite a bit of movement there. You notice the flex in the board. But very, very risky here. You do not want to break the board. So gentle prying, double check screws. So checking the other side here. 
I'm pretty confident there's nothing there, no screws. I'm trying to pry it loose, but it's just not budging. Okay, that takes us into the side method there. So again, just want to apply gentle force. You'll notice that it's coming apart. Lots of flicks on that board, but that is pretty much the only way you're going to get it out. Definitely second guessing myself there. I'm like, did I miss a couple of screws perhaps? I really don't see any anywhere. The ones on the side at the rear uh, fan exit there is mainly just for the bracket. They do not hold the fan shroud itself. So I think here we get lucky, finally managed to work it out. And you'll see why it was so much trouble. So on the fan shroud there, there is some uh, heat sink material there to try and dissipate some of the heat off these cards. Uh, sorry, that's going to remain relatively blurry, but that's okay. You'll notice there's a very well designed card here. We have four slots. You can put variable length in VMEs. And just overall a very well designed card. You'll notice the copper heat sink there. It is a very heavy unit, very, very well designed for your NVMe cards. So sorry again, a little blurry, but we got two 970s there. One is a 500 gig with the operating system. Uh, the other two are only 250 gig, so still a bit, of, bit on the small side on these. Now there is a little bit of the uh, material there sort of baked onto these NVMe's. As I said, they've been in there for, I suspect, about three months now. Um, but that's okay. We're really just here to show you guys what this looks like on the inside and how to actually utilize this card. So hopefully the camera will sort itself out soon. And don't forget the fan. You'll notice a very nice uh, fan unit there that helps to maintain some sort of airflow on top of the heat sinks which help to dissipate all of the heat. These do generate quite a bit of heat. So removal, grab your magnetic screwdriver, decide which one you want to remove, or if you're inserting them, obviously you can decide which lane. So we just have one little screw there, very straightforward. Again, sorry about the blur. Magnetic screwdriver, little bliss. So a slight little tug on that one and it comes out, no trouble. Slightly better focus there, that's okay. So going back in, you'll notice it's a M slot. These do not support the NGFF type. So the M key is the only acceptable one for this particular card. Now you can run four, there is a bit of a limit on these. You do require verification. That is a BIOS setting which is available on the HPZ840. Uh, it may not be available on all computers, and I'm pretty sure the person that I bought this off uh, actually had trouble with that on their gaming computer. So definitely want to make sure your computer is compatible. In this case, the workstation can do it. You can split the 16 times PCIe lane into four channels of four times. Hence the magic of running four NVMEs on one 16 times slot. So reverse process here, those screws are again very delicate, incredibly short thread. You want to make sure that they're perfectly aligned. Don't use power tools on this one, just takes a couple of spins and they're all mounted. So tension wise, you don't want to put a lot of tension on these. I aim to do a very small amount of tension, that's usually enough. Just getting a better angle there for you guys. Uh, they can be tough to position even with a magnetic screwdriver. And you'll notice as the tension comes up, the PCB sort of gets pulled towards the fan shroud. So that's normal. You will expect a little bit of flex in there. And very slight amount of torque on these. You do not want them to be over torqued. And yes, they're a handful. Sometimes even with the magnetic screwdriver. So I think that's roughly two or three revolutions there, then they're all mounted. Okay, jumping into the next lot of screws. So that's going to mount 
our shroud back to the PCB, which is good. Very, very well designed PCB there. Okay, that takes us on to the next part there, which is the rear shroud. Very important here for heat dissipation, but also there to protect the card from flex. It's quite useful. We're looking for those copper standoffs. There are six of them. You want to align your uh, card. You'll notice the spacing is slightly different. So you want to keep an eye out for those. So notice I pushed down and moved it slightly just to try and center each of those standoffs. Then you're able to very easily thread these back in. Again, do it with a hand tool, much safer. You want to make sure these go in square. If you put them slightly on an angle, you can cross thread your nut in this case, which would be the standoff. And torque wise, very gentle. This isn't going to go anywhere. Once it's mounted on your computer, it sits there quite happily. So you do not need to put a lot of tension on these. At a guess, probably about 5 to 7 newton meters if you've got a torque wrench. Don't quote me on that number. It'll probably cross thread those are very, very thin bolts. Or screws, rather. Okay, joys of magnetic screwdriver. Almost home dry. Now I highly recommend one of these cards if you consider getting NVMEs into your system. Now if you don't have clarification, you will have problems. It'll only detect one NVMe. Now that's not a total loss if your computer's not supporting it. Maybe your motherboard's a bit older or not that top spec sort of uh, top of the range model. It's okay, you can still use it just for one. Price wise, it's going to be more expensive than sort of the cheaper single card uh, NVMe expansion slots. But nonetheless, you are getting a Gen 4 uh, card here. It's able to handle a lot of speed. It does have fan cooling as well, which is quite unique. So temperatures do drop. I have seen my NVMEs under severe load, usually sort of peaking around 52 degrees Celsius. If you don't have one of those, it's not unusual for them to peak at around maybe 62 degrees Celsius. So reinstallation here. Very occluded, but you've got to manage your cables there. Align your 16 times slot. Does have to go into a 16 times to use the full speed. Gentle nudge. Now in this case, clearing the fans, checking that the GPU fans are still able to rotate. Could be worth checking the card, although I did that after installation. Now, cable management would be nice. Very, very tough on this to be able to manage your cable management there. Slight adjustment. The CPU intake fan is right there, so I do want to make sure that cable's nowhere near that particular port. That's looking good. Awesome. Okay, let's get that cover back on. Now you guys know how to install an NVMe Express right into your PCIe lanes. Now hopefully you guys enjoyed that video. HPC workstations are incredible machines, I use them for pretty much everything. Take it easy at that end. I'll see you guys on the next one. Well done. Oh wow, you're still there. Well done. Bonus round, let's get through the file settings. You yeah, might not be so familiar with this software. To be fair, it has been discontinued, but really useful. As you can see here, we can go through, check out some of the specifications on the computer. Helps you to keep track of all the different components lined up on this motherboard. Now, very important, going on to the next part here, we're going to look at the BIOS settings. Now, you can do this within the actual BIOS as well, but this is just a handy little shortcut being able to pop in here to quickly set up the BIOSification. Uh, really, just doing this to show you guys, because you'd have to do this in the BIOS to actually do this the first time you install it. But you'll notice down here we have 4x4x4x4 four by four by four by four BIOSification active. And that just allows us to run four NVMEs on that single 16 times PCIe slot. So very useful. 
and quite a cool bit of software there as well but i do believe it's discontinued last time i checked it wasn't available for download i'm sure you guys can still find it out there somewhere uh, but incredibly useful software now one other thing that's useful here we got system sensors very useful to quickly check all the temperatures and make sure all the fans are still working as they should and i guess if they're misbehaving you can check that there as well and one last detail there you can record your performance now huge benefits from this i don't need to tell you guys the benefits of actually data logging all your sensors in the computer something that you really miss on your gaming rig normally but on these machines you can log everything really convenient with the software as well if we uh, quickly browse through here you'll have a look that was just a half a second recording there but nonetheless we get a whole heap of data very easy to sort of work your way through if you are troubleshooting or even just checking your overall computer's performance take it easy at that end i'll see you guys on the next one well done